you got to thank God for that. Man, we're going to continue today in our series of preaching. I love my church. It is my, our, our month that we recognize our church and God gives the belief of the church the uh, uh, opportunity to grow, the believer, the opportunity to grow in our faith, grow in our knowledge of the Lord. Uh, and he does it by way of the church. It is God's. It's, you know, preachers didn't come up with the church. Jesus, Jesus told Peter, upon this rock I build my church. And the very gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So it is God's organization, amen, this idea of the church. We're going to continue to talk about it. Last week we talked about the power of the church. The power of the church comes through prayer. Amen. That's the most powerful thing that you've got. Somebody think it's your weaponry. you got some guns at your house. God will put you in a position where you can't get to your gun. Uh, God will make your gun now fact function. Well, you got to trust in him. Amen. So don't put your that, don't put your faith in, in that kind of stuff. Uh, church has power. Prayer can go where you can't go. Prayer can lift what you can't handle. Huh? Prayer will endure what you were ready to give up on. Right. Amen. So that's the most powerful tool that you have in this prayer. Today, I want to move to another subject. Go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14 through 22. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 through 22. When you find the letters on God by standing to our feet for reading and reverencing of his word. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. Hear the word of God. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of petition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man so making peace and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross having slain the enmity thereby and came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them that were not for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord in whom ye also are built together for an inhabitation of God through the Spirit. You may be seated in the presence of God. Read a whole lot today, and you probably said, what is he getting ready to talk about? Last week, we talked about the power of the church. Today, we want to talk about or discuss the peace of the church. Understand, sisters and brothers, that we indeed, as the church, as the body of cross uh, of Christ, uh, have peace. We 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 have peace, sisters and brothers, uh, with regard to being the church, and to understand this peace that 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 we have. We must understand it not from a corporate level. And when I say a corporate level, I mean the us assembled as a body of believers. We, 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 to, to better understand the peace of God is, is, is to better understand it on an individual 
level. And I want you to know that individually, you are just as much of the church as you are collectively. I'm going to say it again. Individually, you are just as much of the church as you are collectively. Why? Because you have the Holy Spirit inside of you individually. And so it does not matter if we come together or assemble together as a body. I have Jesus Christ, uh, his Holy Spirit inside of me right now. And so I'm the church, whether I'm at 1222 East Redbird Lane, or I'm up the street at Lower Land, or I'm up the street at Good Luck, or I'm at the street at the zoo, I am just as much of the church by myself as I am collectively. And so when you understand it like that, you can understand that when God says that the church has peace, you got to understand it that we each have peace individually. Because before we can come together and assemble as the body of Christ together, we must first receive Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Does not matter uh, uh, us coming together and calling ourselves the church. The proof that we are the church is that Jesus Christ is living on the inside of us individually. And let me tell you something. I might hurt your feelings, but if the Holy Ghost ain't on the inside, you are not a part of the body of Christ. So what if your name is on the church roll? So what if you are a regular at Sunday school? If God is not living on the inside, you are not a part of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. But the good news is, we found out a few weeks ago, doors of the church open. Mm -hmm. Just because you're not in now, that does not mean that's your permanent plight. Mm -hmm. Jesus is always available. And the good news, you don't have to wait to that point in the service All right. to say yes to him. Yes, if I were you, if I didn't know him in my spirit, I'd say, uh-huh, yes, Lord. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So, so anyway, so anyway, with this idea of peace, it, it has first to be realized on an individual basis. And so, Paul, he writes to the church at at Ephesus, and he he's he's reinforcing what Christ is doing in the life of the believer. He he draws attention to the differences between uh, the Jews and the Gentiles, and 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 Paul he's going to spend time. Uh, talking to, to both audiences and dressing both audiences because the, the Jews uh, 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 thought that they were so good and because they were chosen, nobody else could be a part of God's salvation. And then, and then the Gentiles stood on the other side of the equation uh, they didn't believe that they were worthy or that there, there was a pathway for Gentiles to receive uh, salvation. And so Paul spends time uh, putting uh, the, 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 uh, uh, addressing these agendas of the Jews and of the Gentiles because what, what is, what is, what's happening is the peace of God that's supposed to come, it's being erupt, uh, interrupted because of these problems that are surfacing. And so Paul, the first thing that he under, wants us to understand is that if we're going to have the peace of God, first thing we need to understand is, number one, the differences are gone. That, that, that Paul states that the, the Jew and the Gentile, both of them are lost. The Jews think they're better because they, they got God's law. God spent, he loves us so much that he took time to write down his law to us. He gave us the law. Well, guess what? He gave it to them, but they couldn't follow it. Mm -hmm. 
Huh? So having the law uh, makes you just as lost as the Gentile that you think you're better than. Mm. Huh? So, so Paul, look at what he says. For uh, these differences are gone. Look what he said in verse 14. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of petition between us. You need to understand, sisters and brothers, even now, the church, uh, we have differences. We, we, we perceive ourselves to be better than folk who are outside of our circles. A lot of times we frown upon uh, church methods and methodologies that don't match up with our own uh, with our own histories and our own backgrounds. We, we look at folks sometimes wondering why they doing all that in their worship. You know, that type of thing. And, and it don't take all that to, to worship God, those type of things. But we got to be careful that we don't use that as a, as a petition to separate Ourselves. The beauty of our worship, sisters and brothers, is God may not move me the way he moves you, but guess what? He's still God. Uh, tears may come to your eyes, and my, 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 my tears in my eyes might not necessarily well up, but guess what? He's still real to me. So we gotta, we gotta, we gotta thank, quit, stop thinking, because I've been in this thing longer than anybody else. Uh, uh, I, I know what God, I know what God is, I know what real is. No, oh, sisters and brothers, we, we got to be careful of the church as well as the unchurch. We need to understand that the, the difference is gone. Look what the scripture says. He reconciles us both unto God in one body by the cross having slain the enmity there by what, what's the enmity? Sin? Uh -huh. huh? What, what's separating both the Jew and the Gentile from God? Sin? Yeah. And, and here I'll make it real for you. What's, what, what's separating the Baptist and the Presbyterian mm. and the Church of God in Christ and the Church of Christ from God. Sin is the same thing. Why? Because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's why I find myself, I don't pick on anybody. I don't pick on Republicans. I don't pick on uh, gays and lesbians. I don't pick on folk who are different than me because we have all have sinned and fallen short of his glory. And so Paul says in verse 17, came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them that were not. I love this because Paul is describing the Jew and the Gentile in that text. He says he, he saved both of us by the cross. Uh, the ones who were close, look what it says, who were, uh, no, those that were afar off, that's the Gentile. Those that are afar off, those the folk that we think that are too distant from God that can't be saved. Those that were afar off, those that we've given up on, but God still has his hand upon. Listen, those that were far off, and guess what? He preached to them that were nigh too. 
those that were far off, those that we think that are raggedy and dirty and worse. God says the message is not just for them. It's for them ones that are close to the ones that show up on Sunday mornings, the ones that show up and sing in the choir, the ones that stand on the usher board. God says those that are far and those that are close, all of them need a Savior. He says, I came to reconcile everybody. Because oh, yeah. see, see, the ones that, you, you got to be careful. You folk that were reared in the church, I think it's a good thing to be reared in the church. Yeah. To grow up in the church. Mm -hmm. But don't you get it twisted. Mm -hmm. You got to accept Jesus Christ yeah. Yeah. as your Lord and Savior. Yeah. Yeah. Come in the church don't make you saved. And then, and man, don't miss it. Don't, don't make all the musicals. Don't make all the services. Don't be the first one at Sunday school and then mess around and die in your sins and go to hell. All right. Come on. Come on. All right. Come on. All right. <laughs> Just because I sang in the U choir back in the 70s, uh -huh. don't make me saved. Somewhere between then and now, I needed to have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Yeah. And so, don't, don't get it twisted, uh, Aiden, just because you're the church drama. That ain't accepting Jesus. Yeah. Huh? Just because you're the announcement clerk, John, that ain't salvation. Amen. That's just performing a work, a task. That Jesus being on the inside, that's a personal matter. And that's something that you ought to be able to say yes to. If somebody asks you if Jesus is on the inside, that should be no hesitation. That should be no waiting. That should be no moment of, of, of contemplation. It should be yes, he is the center of my yeah. job. Yeah. Hallelujah. Anything else yeah. is inadequate. Yes. And you have you have peace with God. If you don't you don't have a question with regard to your salvation, you are at war with God. Mm -hmm. Huh? To to persist in your sins uh, puts at us at odds with God. Mm -hmm. And so to have this peace, come on, we understand the difference. The difference is gone. But second. We want to understand that not only is the difference gone, but the distance is gone as well. Look what the scripture says in verse 18. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Listen, li li listen, listen, listen. Let me say, let me say this. You li listen, S sin. God is so holy that that even the little stuff, stuff we call little, little sins, mm -hmm. is offensive to God. To God. Yeah. Anybody ever had a white shirt, white dress mm -hmm. that they had on? Mm -hmm. huh? on listen, man. listen. I rather spend, I rather spill something big on it than to get a little spot. That little spot where we all day long. Now on, now on. Because if, it, if it's a big spot, I got enough sense to just go ahead and change it. But a little spot, I'll try to 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 yeah, endure yeah, yeah. it. It bothers me. It's offensive to me all day long. I'm worried about it. I'm wondering if somebody looking, he think he cleaned that big old spot. <laughs> Amen. Huh? And, 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 and so God, take it to a higher plane. Take it to a spiritual plane. God is holy. He's white. He's spotless. And he's not going to allow us to contaminate his holiness. My God. My God. Uh, and so your big stuff. My God. The, the rapes. The folk that practice incense. That big stuff. Huh? It ain't as bad as my little stuff. Mm -hmm. huh? Listen, your, your little white, your little, your little dot of, of, of a speck 
of evilness, of unrighteousness, in the presence of God, it offends him. Huh? All of it. And see, that, that when you understand that, you understand, you don't talk about the rapists, you pray for them. Because all have sinned and fallen short. I'm not trying to please men. The government places uh, 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 statuses on crime. I, I let the government do that. When I think about God, all of us are offensive to him. Without the blood of Jesus Christ, all of us are unrighteousness. All of us are no good. All of us are unworthy to be in his presence. Yes, yes. So he wants, a, he wants the church to understand mm. that the distance is gone. You know why he wants us to understand? That, and he used this idea of access. We all have access because he don't want us to pick and choose who we're going to evangelize. Come on. Right. Come on. He don't want us to pick and choose who we going to Ah, Thank you. Come on. Aren't you glad uh, he didn't put us in charge yes. of heaven? Guess what? If I was in charge of heaven, it'd be some folk that may not make it. <laughs> but thanks be to Jesus. Come on. Yeah. Come on. And why he didn't put me in charge? He wants us to know that all have access to distance. Huh, is is gonna get off your pedestal. Come on. Thinking you better than Come on. Thank you. Let me you. tell you, the distance is gone. All of us get thank you, Holy Spirit. When you get to Calvary, huh? Ain't no ain't no good seats. Ain't no Come on. And Calvary Preach it. The ground is left. Uh, the ground and level. We might have different grounds in the church where we try to elevate folk because of this and because of that. But baby, when you stew it down the low grade and you get down to the blood of Jesus Christ, you got to get the Calvary. And at Calvary, the ground is level. Level. Hallelujah. Don't look at your financial statement Hallelujah. at Calvary. God doesn't look at your resources at Calvary. God doesn't look at your background at Calvary. Here it is. Close. It's good, eh? It's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This peace. We have it because the difference is gone. Yeah. We have it because the distance is gone. Hallelujah. Now I just want to close with a with a new destiny for the belief. That's that's it. I know it don't match up with it with the other stuff I say. Come on, come on. I know it don't rhyme, but that's what he gave me to. We got the triple D's though. We got the Listen, D's. He says, look at this destiny, verse 19. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, huh? but fellow citizens with the saints. Huh? Because, because this, this issue of, of sin has been fixed, we, we are now uh, citizens uh, numbered with the saints of the household of God. I love this, sisters and brothers, because God changed your address and didn't even tell you. Mm. Uh, do you know that? I know, I know you got an address down here. Mm -hmm. uh, but your permanent address, preach no, uh, has been changed. Hallelujah. Huh? He, he don't, I'm telling you, he's just telling you, he telling you the text. He says, huh, ye are now fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Yeah. Well, sisters and the brothers, he's not talking about earth. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I know we see it on TV all the time, but the place in this text it's better than Mar-a-Lago. Hmm. 
<laughs> Somebody catch that. <laughs> uh, this is somewhere you want to go. Come on. And look what the scripture says. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Love this, sisters and brothers. God, through the mind of Paul, is giving uh, credit to whom the church is built upon. He, he says that the apostles and the prophets, they play a role. But Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. And you got to be careful, sisters and brothers, what you attach to your build. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it's designed to be fitly framed together. Right. There are some things that are being said about God that don't fit. Huh? The scripture says that our beliefs, our notions about God, our foundation is to be fitly framed together. That means, sisters and brothers, if your beliefs are fitly and framed together and Jesus Christ is the cornerstone, uh, you measure everything by the cornerstone. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, some carpenters do. They, 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 if, if they'll, they'll, they'll measure something. They'll, right, they'll, right. They'll, they'll lay the cornerstone and then right. they'll measure something off the cornerstone. Right. And the temptation is to uh, take that piece that you cut and that you measure off the cornerstone. Uh, the temptation is to take that and use it as a template and cut all your boards. That's right. That's right. By that. But you shouldn't do that. Uh, but you better be careful. Yeah. Uh, because, yeah, uh, a template, something that looked like the cornerstone. Come on. <laughs> ain't necessarily. Come on. The cornerstone. All right, all right. <laughs> you got to be careful, sisters and brothers, of what you allow to be attached right. to your belief system. Mm. Because Satan wants to mess up Come on. your design. And let me tell you something. If you mess up your design, you won't have peace. Mm. Huh. Well, I'm going to let you chew on that <laughs> the rest okay. of the week. Right. That is a little nugget at the end of this. And I would be remiss if I didn't bring it up. Mm -hmm. you, you, we're talking about this this peace. Yeah. And God says, don't miss this, in verse 22, when, it, when the building is framed right and is straight, look what it says in verse 22. You are also built together for an habitation All right. of God through the Spirit. Huh? Now, listen, that's that old theology, theology talk. That when I get to, I make me want to close my Bible. Huh? And uh, I'll think about it later on. Uh -huh. I don't know, but I got to worrying about that word, hab habitat. Uh -huh. that, that God wants to make this building his place of habitation. That, that what he's saying is that I want you to frame up this building and I want Jesus Christ to be the cornerstone. And then what God says, I want to move in the building. Mm. Huh? He said, I ain't going to live anywhere. He says, the foundation's got to be straight and Jesus Christ, everything got to run off him. Mm -hmm. But if everything is straight, Huh? And it meets my specification. God says, I won't just look at it. God says, I'll live in it. Huh? Well, knowing you're telling me some good stuff, 
<laughs> you're telling me some good stuff. How do I get God mm. to live Come on. in my house? Come on. Uh, I'm, I'm going to preach it. It's in the scriptures. Come on. Go to Psalms 22. Psalms 22, verse 3. He says, But thou art holy. Mm -hmm. That's that building again. Mm -hmm. that, that's that building again. Thou art holy. O thou mm -hmm. inhabitants, mm -hmm. the praises of Israel. Mm -hmm. Ah, don't miss this, sisters and brothers. You want God to live in your building. Bible says, I'll give you a glimpse of how to uh, move me in. Huh? He says, do what Israel does. Israel, when they want to see my presence, they praise. And he's, the, the psalmist says, I inhabit their praise. In other words, I go live, I go dwell where there is praise. Fast forward back to the church at Ephesus. God says I'm giving you opportunity to allow me to live in your house. I just told you how to build it. Now let me tell you how to get me to come live in it. Learn how to praise my name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God says, if you want me to live in your house, you got to learn how to praise my name. Yes, you got to build uh -huh, your life on righteousness. You got to frame it up the right way up uh, and you gotta run everything up uh, by Jesus Christ uh, but when you do that uh, you can have the expectation uh, of God living in the house uh, is there anybody here that can testify uh, that God he lives on the inside of me uh, and it's because uh, I've learned how him. I've learned how to call Jesus up. I heard a songwriter wrote, uh -huh, Jesus is on the main line. You got to tell him what you want. Can I tell you how to dial his number? You dial his number by telling God you are worthy. You dial Get on you. Come on. You ain't cool no more. 
Can anybody testify? Huh? I want to know. My, my hair dude was tight. I shook all that weave out my hair. Yeah. God. It's this quickening of your spirit. You feel this energy. Huh? That'll make you cry. Yes. It ain't nothing wrong with you. Yeah. <laughs> that's 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 God. Huh? It'll make you run. You in your house running. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ain't nobody behind. <laughs> yeah. Don't step in the room. Huh? Anybody ever got in their word and just start scratching? Come just, on. Ah! Oh, he just showed me something. He, huh? Hallelujah. Because he, he's fixed it so mm. you can feel it. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Uh, and let me tell you something. The good thing about it is you don't have to be in church right. to feel it. Somebody, God knows sometimes you're going through something in the middle of the week. And he's telling you, listen, if you get off your phone, if you turn that radio down, Huh? If you quit huh, checking emails and returning phone calls and sit still for a minute, I'll let you feel me. Come on. Huh? And let me tell you, ain't been a time that I felt God's presence and things weren't made better yeah. than what? They were. They were. Yeah. And so God, he gives this overwhelming peace. And let me, let me tell you something. In, in your lifetime, in your walk with Jesus Christ, your, your day, I'm talking about your day-to-day -day walk with Jesus Christ. Huh? What God is, is, is really going to do for you most of the time is give you peace. Thank you, Lord. Huh? That's going to be and, and, and guess what? As you get older and as you grow in grace and grow in wisdom, you're going to find out that that's the best thing Woo! in the world. Peace. All things are well with your children. Peace. All things are well on your job. Peace. Maybe things aren't all well on your job, but guess what? God didn't fix them. He messed around and fixed you. And because he fixed you, you're able to go back into the same place around them same raggedy folk, around them same line folk, around them same baptized with folk. Because you quit worrying about other folk and you allow God to work on you. And that's what he wants to do. That's what he wants to do and he will. Yes, he will. He'll give you his, yes. his peace. That's what the church has. We have power. Yeah. And we have peace. I'm not about to extend the invitation of the church, but be careful of what you allow to interrupt your peace. Huh? When things are, God, God will do things that will interrupt your peace. Huh? You think that it's in, he'll just give you peace while you're going through it. But there will be certain things that will come through that will try to destroy your peace. Huh? That will try to destroy your peace of mind. Thank you. But I want you to know, sisters and brothers, your peace, thank you, Holy Spirit, he wants you to know that your mental health is tied to your peace. Yes, huh? Your mental wellness is tied to your peace. And that's why you got to make sure that whatever you're going through, don't you isolate yourself. Don't you be by yourself. You invite God into that. You read your Bible. You read his word. You continue to watch yourself in the truth of his word. Truth. And God will truth. bring you through that. Yes. Uh, too many times problems come. We isolate ourselves and we'll, we'll, we'll get depressed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, listen, he didn't, he didn't take, he didn't give you loss so you could be depressed. Huh? He gave you loss because that's his will. And what he wants you to know is that your, your, your struggle with the loss is not going to change anything with regard to the loss. But what he will give you is peace while you're going through that storm. Huh? And he'll help you. If you call him, right. if you cry out to him, 
hand. Man, he'll, he'll hear and he will answer. So, the peace of the church is available. We began our presentation by drawing our attention that it's, it's an individual decision that we first have to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior for ourselves. Romans 10 and 9 says, If thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe within thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Salvation is yours for the asking. You only need to come. 